Hi, I'm Andrew. Welcome to my kitchen. I now have two cameras here because there's another person filming with me, which hasn't happened in a long time. And it's Annie. You wanna say hi, Annie? There's me, upside down. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 of my favorite kitchen items. Now, I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. First, I've seen a lot of comments about the things that I use to make food. And I think it's interesting to discuss personal favorites because I don't think that any of these are necessarily the best version of their thing, but sometimes your favorite things can be kind of arbitrary. Like, why do I like this spoon versus another spoon? Well, it's the one that I like, and now it's imbued with that power that I like it a lot. Maybe this will help you realize why you like the things that you like and can inform kitchen outfitting decisions that you make in the future. So number 10 is these tongs. And there are these skinny stainless steel single piece tongs. I bought them at a Japanese kitchen supply store. The product description says that they are for yakiniku barbecue, but I use them for everything. They're very skinny, yet still very sturdy and can do a lot of tasks. Like they're nimble enough to turn whole pieces of meat. And one of my favorite things to do is when making spaghetti, I can use these to lift all of the strands of noodles out of the boiling water and directly into the sauce that I'm cooking with, thereby eliminating the need for a strainer altogether. It's then also super useful for plating. And it's functional because when you set it down, the tongs are naturally lifted off surface of wherever you set them down. The shape is kind of like the profile of an albatross in flight, you know? Like a crane or a heron. Should I keep naming birds? <laughs> but in the theme of smaller being better, Number nine is this small offset spatula. I did not purchase this, it was my partner. She mainly wanted to use it for baking. It caught my eye in the drawer and I've started using it for most savory cooking. It's very good for flipping over small individual things, much like the tongs. Yeah, we're still talking about tongs. One thing with a tong is that if you wanna flip something, you're, you're doing this, you know? I think an underrated move though, you have two separate things they can move counter to each other. So flipping something, the tools are going in different directions. So you're rotating by going like that. You can really just get into the seams and crevices and things. And I even use it for large things. Like now if I'm making a piece of fish and then it's mainly to lift it up and then I just use my hand to coax the fish over to the other side. Sometimes with a, like a spatula that's too large, you run the risk of damaging that underside. But with this, you can do it very delicately. So this is almost like less of a spatula and more like if one of my fingers was thin and metal. <laughs> Number eight is this dish rack. That's right, a dish rack is one of my favorite kitchen items. It's boring, right? But that's the whole point. It's not that I enjoy doing dishes. I hate dishes as much as everybody else. But if you can find things that make it suck a little bit less, I think it's worthy of praise. And I like this one a lot because it's very large, it's very sturdy. You could put almost anything in it. I put giant pots in it. It mostly doesn't suck because like, it's a solid metal, mostly single piece of rack. Number seven is this omelet pan. This is a steel omelet pan. So you have to maintain it the same way you do cast iron. And this is definitely something that I, knew that I didn't need, but I really wanted. And then once I got it, I found out that I needed it all along. It has this very nice bowl shape to it, which is great for making omelets. And it has dual purpose of, I can also just use it as a small frying pan for anything else. In the potato video, you can see that I'm browning the pave potatoes at the end in this pan. So I basically also use it like a tiny cast iron. Eggs are such a uniquely difficult thing to cook that if you have one pan that's dedicated to making that, it frees the rest of your pans where you no longer have that requirement, if that makes sense. It's a hefty piece of metal. Number six, these scissors. These were scissors that I didn't need, but I saw them and I wanted them. Scissors in the kitchen, this isn't news, but they're extremely useful. Snipping herbs, cutting up poultry. We care so much about the knives that we use for preparing food 
You should put just as much thought into scissors because that's just like two knives taped together, you know? Identify something that you use every day and find a version of it that you personally really like and it'll just add a little bit of sparkle to that thing that you do every day. And look at the way it connects in the back. Well, the first time I used these, I pinched the out of my skin between that. It was rude awakening. Okay, number five is in fact not one item, but it's a whole category. It's all my dishes and plates and, and mugs, which all come from the same store. So it is kind of one. And it's from a California ceramics maker called Heath Ceramics. I started by just buying like one or two plates. And then I liked them so much that over time I just got more and more. And now I basically only have these Heath Ceramic plates. You like your food more when you like the plate it's on. You may not like these individual bowls and that's, that's totally fine. I think that's completely reasonable. I think they're not everybody's taste, but when I see this color and I'm like, oof, I love that color. And then I just start thinking about like, oh, what would look amazing in here? What if I put strawberries to contrast with this green? And that's just something that personally makes me very excited. It's something that you use every day, so why not get something that you really like? Even if I'm just having my oatmeal in the morning, you know, it's coming out of this bowl, and I just, I love it. So number four is this spoon. It's something called a bouillon spoon. And I recently had to buy new forks and spoons and knives. And I decided to go through a sort of restaurant supply style website. And instead of just getting the standard sort of tablespoon shape, they had these bouillon spoons. And it turns out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. Just for your reference, this is like, you know, your classic teaspoon shape. And the tablespoon would just be a larger version of this. So I could have got a larger version of this, but instead I got this. And I think what it is is that, you know, with this kind of spoon, sure there are activities where you're gonna be going like this, point in. But a lot of the time you wanna go like this and drag that wide edge along the surface of the bowl. But with this one, you got that wide edge on the front. So now you're just plowing into the thing that you're eating. And it's extremely satisfying to eat almost anything with it. And I find that very fun. It has big spoon presence, but in a small spoon package. Number three, this knife. This is my favorite knife. It's a carbon steel petty knife that I purchased from a store called Corin in New York City. But we actually filmed a worth it lifestyle video with Corin. I purchased this knife because I was very interested in Japanese knives and a new knife for my kitchen. And I went with this one because I thought it would be a great introduction to Japanese knives and to carbon steel knives, which means that this knife is not stainless. As you can see, it's like a little tarnished from cutting into food. But the advantage of that is that it's a much harder kind of steel that keeps a really sharp edge for longer. It's very small and nimble for doing little slicing or detailed work. I've also learned how to sharpen the knife myself on a whetstone, which has also been very satisfying for me. Having a very sharp knife, very good. And even though I thought at the time of purchase that this would be sort of a stepping stone to a full-size chef's knife, this has been very satisfying and kind of the only knife I ever need. Although, any, you can just blur this part, but I did recently buy a larger knife. But that's for a different video. Check the channel for that. My second most favorite kitchen item is this cork lid. Yeah. And you thought it was gonna get boring with dish rack. So what is this cork lid for? Well, it actually originally came with this container. And I started using this cork lid actually next to my sink as a place to rest my petty knife on after I had just finished cleaning it. Because it's not stainless steel, you have to wash it pretty much immediately after you're done cooking with it, and you also can't let it remain wet. So even though I would dry it, you know, with a hand towel, it was usually had just kind of like a little bit of residual dampness. So then I realized, oh, I have this cork lid sitting around and I can just set it on that. Sometimes the best thing was not made originally for the purpose that you thought it would be for, you know? Nor would I wanna buy one that was specifically made for that purpose. That kind of ruins it for me. Okay, it's not that exciting. Actually, Petty Knife is my number two favorite and this is actually more like a number nine. So just rearrange everything. Okay, Petty Knife is now number two, Cork Lid is three. Or no, Cork Lid is like nine. <laughs> Sorry, Annie. <laughs> 
My number one favorite kitchen item is this stainless steel tray. It's become kind of my most multi-purpose and frequently used kitchen item. If I'm cooking something and I need to rest my spoon there, it's perfect. You know, if I was using these tongs, for example, boom, they rest on the tray. I've also used it to do things like, I just finished frying something in this pan and I need to tilt it to one side to let the fat drain. So then I put this tray upside down underneath it. It's also very handy if you're tasting something you're cooking and don't want to drip, boom. I've also at times just in a hurry just taken this and tasted something with it because it's kind of like a giant spoon. This particular design just kind of speaks to me. It's very simple. It's like basically indestructible. I don't think that you necessarily need one of these, but you need your own one of these in your life, if that makes sense. Well, those were my 10 favorite kitchen items. I hope you learned something. Again, these are not necessarily the best items, but they're my favorite. And I hope that a little view into my decision-making will illuminate something for yourself in your own decision-making life. 